in every individual life as well as every church, there will be moments of major transition, major change. Some of them will be by choice. Some of them will be imposed upon us by circumstances beyond our control. But where do we find the courage, the faith, the strength to navigate the major transition and move forward to the future with hope and with faith? These words that God spoke to Joshua, I think, give us much to think about in the transitions of life. Did you hear about the pastor who was meeting with three elders in the church? The pastor was passionately sharing with them what he believed was God's vision for the church, for the future. And the three elders listened as the pastor explained how he felt like God was leading in a certain way. And the elder that was in charge said, well, pastor, let's vote. And they took the vote, and it was three to one. The elders said no, and the pastor said yes. And then they said, well, that closes the meeting, let's pray. Pastor, would you pray? The pastor wasn't ready to give up on that vision. So in his prayer, he said, God, could you show these three elders that this is your vision for your church, not my vision? And just then a lightning bolt flashed through the window, split the table in half, and knocked all four of them on the floor. The lead elder got up and said, well, pastor, that makes it three to two. You still lose. In the marvelous book, Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll writes about a conversation between Alice and the Cheshire cat. Alice says to the cat, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? The Cheshire cat said, well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Alice said, I don't much care. The Cheshire cat said, then it doesn't matter which way you go. You know, the common truth is that all those transitions that we're speaking of, major transitions, is that the loss of a loved one? Is it the change of job? Are you moving even to Bemidji, Minnesota? Are you going through difficult relational things? Are you facing major illness? What's your transition? What's your challenge? What is it that stops you in your tracks and leads you to wonder, how can I go forward? But in every major transition that we face, we need a vision to move forward into the future that God has in mind for us. A vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish, the word says. Vision is a clear, compelling path to a preferred future reality. Psychologists tell us that people with no vision have much less energy and passion in their lives. All of us need direction, we need purpose, we need to know where we're going and why. We need to know why we're here and why our lives matter. Faith feeds that vision and faith as God speaks it to Joshua, gives us the courage to move into the future, that major transition, whatever it is, and turns the transition into an adventure. In Paul's writing to the Philippians, here's the vision that he had. I want to know Jesus Christ. I want to know fellowship with his sufferings. Nothing else in life is worth a pile of rubbish. I want to know Jesus. So I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. So every one of us that are in this room this morning by faith in Jesus Christ have been grasped in the loving grace of the God who made us. But there's purpose in his grasping your life. He has a distinct purpose for how you will live for his glory. Well, Faith Church has a vision 
The vision doesn't change. Your values don't change. It's kind of like a championship horse, you know, that chooses to have a different jockey to run the race, right? It's still a championship horse. So Faith Lutheran, what are your values? What are your vision? This has always been a church built on the word of God. This is a warm and loving church that has always said we want to welcome all people, whoever they are, as they come through the doors, we pray that the Holy Spirit would fall upon them. And in fact, beyond the doors, we hope that the love that we have within us because of Christ will draw people to this place. That vision doesn't change. We're a people of God who call people into discipleship, like the gospel says, making disciples of all in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you keep that vision as you move into your future and be renewed in your own personal journey that that's part of your calling is to go deeper, be a student of the word, know Jesus Christ in your faith journey. God has big plans for this church into the future. I've said it many times, I'll say it to you again this morning, the best days of faith, Lutheran Church, are still into your future. The powerful impact that you're gonna have in this community as a witness for Christ, to serve with love. I love the saying that Lori Cry has posted in her office by D.L. Moody. It says, if God is your partner, make your plans big. So what do you suppose God is going to do through Faith Lutheran Church into the future or in the other churches that are represented this morning where we want to serve Christ and the mission of the gospel? He's going to do big things. This text about Joshua called to leadership is about entering into the promised land. We sing it in folk spirituals in this, in this nation, the promised land. We even use a euphemism for death as crossing over. So usually when we use the term promised land, we think about it as a final destination. There we've arrived, it's done. Can I suggest to you that the vision of God for the promised land was to bring them to the place where God wanted to live in harmony with them and he wanted them to thrive in their lives as they entered the promised land. It's not the end of the journey. It's the beginning of what Jesus called abundant life. So in order to enter the promised land, there comes a moment where you have to cross where you have to embrace everything that God has promised for you and begin to live in that reality. For God's people, in order to do that, he needed to call a new leader. Moses' time was completed, and now Joshua's time had come. But there's obstacles for Joshua. There'll be obstacles for all of us on our faith journey. The first thing I'd say for Joshua is that he was grieving. His mentor, his friend, his companion for over 40 years from leaving Egypt and on had died. Joshua was grieving. But it was also a big call to leadership. He second-guessed himself. He was paralyzed by self-doubt. Have you ever struggled with self-confidence? Joshua thought, can I lead him? Can I do it? Do I have what it takes? Do I have the gifts I need in order to accomplish it? He was filled with self-doubt. But God would be faithful. God would be faithful to help him to do everything he called him to do. Here's another obstacle Joshua was one of the 12 tribes that went into the promised land 40 years before, came back with the report, this is an awesome place. Joshua and Caleb alone were the two that said, God's promised it, let's go in and take it. Let's go in and possess it. Let's go live there. 10 of the tribes said, no way. We're not gonna do that. Can't do that. 
So their perspective was on human capacity. Joshua's perspective was on what God had promised and what God would do. But now Joshua's the leader. And Joshua's supposed to lead them in. And he knows that once they enter in on the other side of the Jordan, there's still challenges. There's still battles. The world, the promised land is filled with giants. And let's not forget the enemy of our soul. He was alive and well in that time period too. But Satan clouds our vision. Satan messes with our priorities. Satan pulls us off the track and we forget what our vision is. How easily I'm distracted. Perfect memory, but it's short, right? So the Lord Jesus calls you again today to that vision. I want you to know that in Joshua 3, when it came time to actually enter the promised land, there's a moment where you have to boldly step forward in faith, even though it doesn't seem ready for it. What happened? The priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders came to the edge of the Jordan River. It was spring of the year. It was at flood stage. The current was running swiftly. But God said, step into the waters. And when they stepped into the waters, the waters parted. Not until. So as people of faith, there are moments where it doesn't seem like we can go forward, but God has promised it. And so in faith, I've got to say, I'm going to step forward boldly and confidently in faith and believe that God is going to make the way. God is going to fulfill his promises. He's going to do it for us. God also in Joshua 4 told them, take from the middle of the Jordan River 12 stones and build an altar and mark the moment. Celebrate how I am giving you this land. Celebrate my power that is at work for you to cross this Jordan River. Today is an appropriate day, and that's part of why we gather to celebrate what God has done in this church and through this church and through you people. But now I want you to realize that in the celebration, which is so appropriate today, we never lose sight of the future, and the future is glorious. Your future individually, by faith, is glorious. But whatever church you're a part of as people of Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, step forward in faith, and God's going to do glorious things among you. Helen Keller once said, the only thing worse than being born blind is to be born with sight, but without vision. If we've lost our vision, we can pray that God would renew that vision. Steve Covey said, live out of your imagination, not out of your history. So we can thank God for our history But we need the spirit to stir our imagination to be effective to share the gospel for the next generation and into the present context. Kathleen Norris, a writer who talked about the pioneering days and faith and family, wrote this. Disconnecting from change does not recapture the past. It only loses the future. William Carey, the great missionary to India, said, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. Hudson Taylor, the missionary to China, wrote this, many Christians estimate difficulty in light of their own resources. He's suggesting that it paralyzes us. They attempt little and always fail. All spiritual giants are weak people who did great things for God because they reckoned on God's power and presence to work through them. Attempt great things for God. I confess to you even after 40 years as a preacher that I think there are times where I didn't expect that God would do what he promised to do. And so I would throttle back and I would settle a little bit. I'd get into a spiritual rut. 
Is that you too? Expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. Final quote. It was on a plaque in my mother's house. Family is here, so I'll say Viola was a unique character. Beautiful spirit, loved Jesus, loved her family. She had a saying on the fridge that said, everybody's entitled to my opinion. (laughs) But here was the plaque on the wall. The future is as bright as the promises of God. So we're in a post-pandemic reality, and the world has changed. People's patterns have changed because of COVID-19. But should we let that paralyze or discourage us? No. Let me tell you why. Jesus is still Lord, and we belong to him. Second, the world still needs the love of God, the peace of God, the hope of God. Third, the spirit of Jesus is still loose and alive and at work in our world. Pray that your eyes of faith can see where God is at work and then resonate with that. Fourth, the word of God is powerful. It says in Isaiah that your word, God, will not return void without accomplishing what it's set forth to do. When our lives are founded on the truth of the word of God and we claim it as a promise, then God's word is still going to do awesome things to transform people's lives and create faith within them. Fifth, culture needs what only the church can give. Someone said culture needs an alternative to itself, not an echo of itself. The church excuse me, needs to throb with love so that the culture sees the alternative. So you and I need to shine distinctly in a dark world. Where there's discord, we need to be people of peace. We need to be peacemakers who are committed to reconciliation. Where there's hatred in the world, the Lord Jesus calls us to be people of love. And where there's discouragement or despair, we need to be people still full of hope. Why? Because the Lord Jesus is with us. And if God is for us, who could be against us? You remember that old story about the mouse and the elephant? The mouse crossed the chasm on the back of an elephant over a little bridge. And the bridge, of course, shook when the elephant crossed that bridge. They got to the other side, and the mouse said to the elephant, we really shook that bridge, didn't we? (laughs) If there's anything good that happens here, it's the power of the Lord Jesus filling your heart with love and leading you to shine for him. Are you afraid of the future? No, no, no. We're the followers of Jesus Christ. Let's courageously follow Jesus into the future he has for us. Amen.